Hi everyone, welcome to the introduction to FPV drone racing course on Hackaday.U. Uh, my name is Ayan and I'm going to be your course instructor. And this is a course on uh, drones, on uh, specifically on FPV drones, but we're going to talk about a lot of different drones and uh, unmanned aerial vehicles in general. So uh, in this course, uh, we will be seeing different parts that goes inside drone, different uh, uh, physics that is involved when a drone flies in 3D space and digital signal processing, uh, how RC link work and so many things and uh, if you have joined uh, this course uh, using the Eventbrite then you already have read uh, all about this course. So uh, let's get started. So I'll sh quickly show you the setup which I'm going to be using for this course which will uh, help me communicate uh, better uh, what I'm trying to uh, teach here. So. Uh, it's uh, here's my setup and you can see this is the main camera which is recording and here I am recording my screen so on the screen we have uh, different uh, setups I have set up an overhead camera so this I will be using for teaching uh, anything which is uh, related to the drone parts and showing different components that goes inside the drone uh, then this is a, a hybrid kind of view where you can see the overhead camera and alongside uh, the PPT on the left uh, I also set up uh, a small uh, uh, iPad here uh, where I will be uh, using my pencil to uh, draw different things uh, whenever needed in the course. So uh, that is the overall setup. So uh, let's start uh, and I'll start by introducing myself. So, so who am I? I work as an automotive embedded systems engineer here in New Delhi, India and I have been working for almost uh, four years now in industry in different uh, embedded applications based on software, hardware, networking, uh, mostly in automotive things, so automotive domain and internet of things. Uh, apart from that, I uh, do a lot of uh, drone stuff for uh, my hobbies. I build drones, I fly drones for freestyle and racing and all kind of applications, um, uh, RC controlled and aut uh, autonomous drones. I've also helped uh, review uh, books on drones and I uh, post content on drones on my social media channels which you can see on the right. Uh, I'm, so I'm also a DIY tech content creator making content around drones, uh, uh, embedded systems, uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Linux and some of you might already know me from uh, articles featuring my project on Hackerday. So Hackerday has featured quite a few articles uh, on my project. So. Uh, that is there and I'm also organizer for different meetup groups so uh, I founded Hardware Hackers Club a uh, uh, year back and this is a, a good uh, community in uh, New Delhi, India uh, and NCR region. Then I also uh, founded Knife Edge RC Aero Modeling Club a couple of years back where we uh, meet uh, RC enthusiasts for drones and airplanes and helicopters and RC cars and whatnot. We organize meetups and uh, we fly these things, we talk about uh, it and uh, we build this thing. We uh, transfer knowledge and teach people uh, new people in this hobby uh, the rc aero modeling hobby i'm also volunteer for india linux user group delhi which is also another uh, uh, technical linux centric uh, uh, meetup group and uh, nowadays we are having online meetup so do check that out uh, on the right you can see my website that is codeandsolder.com where you can find all my work related to uh, things i just talked about and uh, there are also some links to my youtube my twitter and instagram so basically you can find me anywhere on the internet uh, at the rate iian power that's the username i go by so uh, please uh, feel free to connect and reach out to me in case you have any uh, anything to discuss about any uh, anything you're working on you want to share and you want to talk about uh, feel free to reach out to me so uh, moving ahead i would like to start by mentioning the class structure and what different uh, uh, structure we have in this class so that will help you uh, attending the future classes so uh, we are going to have a weekly class uh, like this where i will be talking about and sharing my screen and uh, telling you about uh, uh, the uh, this, uh, the uh, the content of the classes so it's uh, going to happen every tuesday 9 30 a.m uh, that is eastern daylight time and uh, i'm from india and ist it would be 1900 hours uh, so you can do the conversion if you are from anywhere else uh, in the world uh, so every class is followed by uh, an hour of uh, office hour so that is going to be happening every wednesday 11:30 uh, a.m eastern time and uh, 2100 hour uh, indian standard time so in this in the office hours we will be having a video call uh, i believe on zoom where you can ask questions regarding uh, related to the, uh, this class a previous class and anything in general if you have any query if you if you are working on something related to this uh, course and you want to uh, want to solve any queries so feel free to drop by 
and the links to the office are will uh, you will be getting in your email if you have already signed up for this class uh, this class will, all, will also be available on youtube i believe so yes if you cannot for some reason attend these classes uh, with the even bright like i am uh, guessing hackaday is also putting this on youtube so uh, if you are seeing uh, from that unfortunately you will not be able to attend office hours but uh, feel free to reach out to me using uh, any of my social media handles which i showed in uh, last slide so i'm always happy to help and uh the friend uh the one uh, page which is your best friend for this course is the link that is flashing at the bottom of the screen so this is the main hacker day uh, page course uh, where you can find every information related to this class so this is a project called introduction to fpv drones where uh, i will be posting all the uh, slides which i'm showing i will be posting all those videos and everything here you can find and also some reading materials which i will be sharing starting i believe next class or so as uh, they are still a work in progress so uh, bookmark that link and uh, use that wisely so that is about the weekly class and this office hours apart from that uh, there is a, a structure to this entire course so this uh, course is divided into two parts part a which we have started today and uh, thereafter the part b so uh, uh, in each part we have four classes in the class one that is today we are going to talk about introduction to unmanned aerial vehicles and uh, propeller selection process so that is about today's class and in the next class we will be talking about uh, frame selection and transmitters and receivers uh, after that we will be talking about motors electronic speed controllers and batteries so this is the third class and in the uh, final class of part a we will be talking about uh, flight controller and digital signal processing so that will conclude the part a after that we'll start the part b in which uh, we will be talking about introduction to first person view and telemetry in class fifth and in the class six we'll be talking about putting everything together where we take all the components and uh, put it together to uh, make a drone just uh, uh, like you can see here so a complete drone with everything which would be able to fly uh, and then in the seventh uh, uh, seventh class we will be talking about uh, software comes into the picture uh, because the drone is not only about the hardware there are also software component that does involve a lot of programming a lot of uh, uh, control system and digital signal processing needs to be coded which goes inside this and makes it stable and flyable in the air so we're going to be talking about that in the class seven and in the final class we will be taking the first flight we will be talking about tuning uh, because every drone is different every part is different you need to it, uh, you need to tune your drone according to your needs uh, we will be talking about safety checks and basic mistakes which you can avoid so that concludes the entire course and uh, the part b so to take the part b the prerequisites are uh, part a uh, which uh, is already uh, uh, started here so let's talk about today's uh, agenda and the agenda for today's class as i already mentioned so first of all we'll start by talking about the kit because a lot of people would have a question that what uh, part should i buy if i want to make a drone so i'm going to clearing uh, i am going to be clearing that doubt uh, in the very beginning of this class after that we will be talking about drone laws around the world because uh, that is uh, where the legal part comes into the picture and nobody wants to be get sued for uh, building or flying drone so we will be talking about drone laws around the world uh, then i will be sharing some applications of uavs because uh, of course if you are taking the course you should be knowing what are the different applications of uavs and how drones are being used around this world for uh, different purposes so that we will also cover in today's class after that we will be talking about what are drones so uh, what exactly is a drone what exactly is a technical scientific correct definition of a drone because when we talk about drone it's a very very wide thing it involves a lot of different things so what counts as a drone what count what doesn't count as a drone we will be talking about that in uh, this section of this class uh, then we'll uh, start the real fun thing uh, and we'll talk about physics which keep a drone in air and we will be going back to some basic fundamental of physics forces and what not so that is also uh, we will be covering in today's class after that we'll uh, we'll continue with the physics and talk about degree of freedom and what degree of freedom a flying body has in terms of yaw pitch and roll and uh, how they are achieved how these motions are achieved by different kinds of drones or uavs after that we'll be talking about basic introduction to signal processing and sensor involved there is an entire class dedicated to this topic but uh, i will be touching upon this in today's class because it's important to have a basic understanding of uh, why these things are required 
uh, when we are flying a drone using a remote why do we still need signal processing why do we need sensor when we can manually control with the remote so i will be touching upon that in today's class but uh, definitely we will be talking about uh, much more details in future classes uh, then we will be having a basic talk on all the components so a drone is a multi uh, processor system where different kinds of things happening at same time at a very high speed uh, we will be talking about motor csc flight controller and all kind of things and how all these things comes together uh, to make a, a drone a make a uav uh, we will be talking about in greater details in their respective chapters as i showed you before but uh, today we will be just touching upon them and just uh, giving you a basic introduction about how these things uh, work together uh, then the, in the last part of this class we will be talking about propeller selection guide and uh, if you talk about this propeller this is like a small uh, plastic fan and this is uh, like the cheapest component of the drone but still the most important component in my opinion and in today's class we'll be talking about how to choose a propeller uh, based on what are different types of propeller what are the material used to make this propellers and size of propellers uh, and how that matters in your drone selection uh, the pitch of the propeller and what not so uh, let's start this class by talking about the kit and uh, if you want to make your own drone and if you have already make your, uh, had make your own drone in the past then you know that a lot of different things are required to build a drone you need a transmitter you need a receiver you need a frame you need motors uh, electronic speed controller and all kind of things so uh, it is not cheap it is a uh, uh, very expensive hobby to build a drone and uh, hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars can be invested to uh, make the right drone for your uh, choosing uh, but i want to convey here that the only reason i have not given any list of parts which i recommend is because of multiple reasons so the biggest reason of uh, among all is the availability so uh, people have joined this class from everywhere in in the world and uh, if I recommend one particular frame that may not be available in your country, the seller might not ship into your country, then you need to find the alternatives. Uh, same goes for motor, same goes for ESC, then you have, if you import then you have some custom issues because there are some uh, frequency related things that are involved in these things and uh, not every country has very suitable rules for that thing. If I talk about India, it's not uh, legal to import anything that is uh, doing any frequency transmission which has a radio in it without getting a license from communication in uh, ministry. So uh, maybe your country has some similar rules. And uh, some countries are also banned importing uh, any parts which is tagged as a drone. So that is also another problem. Uh, then the other thing which uh, hinders me from recommending any particular kit is uh, because of different requirements. So. Uh, a lot of people has joined this course with the hope that they will be able to build the drone but uh, not everyone would be willing to make a same kind of drone. Uh, for example, there could be some of you out there who wanted to make a drone for drone racing, for, for drone freestyle, uh, first person view video or uh, just getting the adrenaline out of fast flying FPV racing freestyle drones. But there may also be some of you that want to build an autonomous drones maybe to do some application like uh, uh, deploying a payload at a particular uh, latitude and longitude at particular GPS location or uh, you will be uh, wanting a very stable platform for aerial videography platform, uh, aerial videography drone with, the glim with gimbal to make uh, stabilize your footage. Or maybe there are some of you who wants to uh, just build a drone which is used for indoor flying just like the one uh, you can see on the screen on the right hand side a small drone which is like a toy drone which is used indoor so uh, that is the reason I have not provided any kit so a lot of you are out there having different requirements of different application you want to build drone. Uh, but one thing I can promise you is uh, if you take this course very seriously by the end of this course you would be able to choose uh, and mix and match your own parts. Uh, you would know that uh, what size of propeller goes with which motor and which motor goes with which ESC and uh, what frame should be right for you and uh, what are different uh, uh, let's say the flight controller available for you if you want to make an autonomous drone you don't need to buy a transmitter uh, you can send the commands using your computer your laptop uh, but then you will need to buy a, a bit more advanced flight controller which can take uh, GPS uh, sensors which can take magnetometer and barometer and what not uh, if you want to want to build a drone for FPV drone racing then you need to have a small frame uh, with five to six inch of propeller 
uh, but you need to uh, take a very fast flight controller which can do processing very fast because the drone fly very fast and uh, the drone frame should also be uh, solid and rigid enough to take some beating because if you fly at a speed of uh, 150 uh, 200 miles per hour then if you crash then your frame is going to crash then you need uh, different kinds of frames which are made of carbon fiber uh, but while if you are making a drone for autonomous navigation which is very stable platform you can uh, save some money and you can buy a wooden frame uh, which is uh, more suitable for that kind of application so that is the entire reason i have not recommended any kit here and uh, trust me if you take this class seriously and if you go through each and every class then at the end of this course you would be in a position to uh, mix and match your own parts and um, I'll definitely share some of the websites I know from different part of the world and some of the website that can ship worldwide uh, from where I have, bought, uh, I have bought the parts. Uh, but one thing is there that uh, I cannot recommend any particular kit and I cannot guarantee if these parts uh, work together. So uh, you need to take this class seriously and of course I will be there to help you in the office hours and then you can pick your own parts and you can make your own drone uh, based on uh, what requirements you have, what applications you have in mind. So for now. Please don't buy the kit yet. Okay, so moving on before the fun stuff start, let's talk about drone laws around this world and why it is important. So uh, when you have a flying camera in air, which is sending a live feed on your goggles, on your screen, on your laptop, uh, then it becomes a liability for uh, uh, local law enforcement to see that you are not misusing it. You are not using it to invade anyone's privacy. You are not using it for any illegal purposes. So that is why the aviation bodies around this world has uh, made some uh, laws which suit their local law enforcement. So if you talk about India, there is a body called DGCA, which regulates all the flying activity in the country. It's called Directorate General of Civil Aviation, uh, which has formulated the laws for uh, Indian subcontinent uh, regarding the drones. If you talk about United States, there is FAA. Uh, which has formulated the drone laws and different sections and different uh, licensings which you need to uh, need to take an exam to get some license to legally fly drone so uh, with this course the motive is just to give you the information to make your own drone the knowledge which goes inside the drone the physics the mathematics the programming the signal processing and the control system uh, but when you make drone uh, that is completely your liability and uh, you need to be a responsible pilot you need to be a responsible engineer to fly it uh, you need to be very responsible so you are not using it for any illegal purposes you are not using it to invade anyone's privacy and uh, that is totally up to you as a drone uh, builder as a drone pilot to make sure that you are not doing anything uh, wrong or illegal using your drone so before flying any drone or even in some countries before building any drone uh, do check out your local laws and make sure you are in the limits of uh, the uh, law before uh, taking any flight and if you need any license to carry the drone if you need any license to fly the drone make sure you also have that before you do so uh, i as an instructor or this uh, hackerdu platform or any of the related entity will not be responsible if you use your drone in any uh, purposes uh, which are uh, not legal so uh, make sure you do check out your legal laws around in your country and uh, you do abide by that before flying your drone so that is a small thing which i wanted to communicate before starting this course uh, now we can move ahead to the fun parts and let's talk about applications of UAV. So when you have a flying camera in air and especially one which is sending live uh, real time video feed in your ground station, it opens a door for a lot of different applications around this world and a lot of different problems can be solved from uh, disaster management to sending quick help to monitoring wildlife and uh, for avoiding poaching and a lot of different things. And these kinds of uh, applications drone has uh, been deployed around this world and uh, I have shortlisted a few to share with you uh, different applications around this world uh, which are uh, where the drones are being used to solve some sort of problems and uh, there are few which I have shortlisted but there are uh, hundreds and thousands of applications where drones can be used uh, to solve any problem and maybe you can get some ideas seeing these applications and you can also solve some sort of problem so let's see the very first one is uh, from a university in Netherlands called TU Delft and uh, they have created a concept drone ambulance so as you can see a person here is uh, suffering from a cardiac arrest and uh, in situation like this uh, getting uh, quick help is all uh, that is needed to save someone's life and uh, in a country with a lot of traffic especially like India ambulance can take a lot of time to reach and a lot of uh, people die every year just because they cannot get help on time 
so here this lady called the hospital where they sent a drone a very high speed drone so as i can see it's a y6 uh, kind of drone where you have three motors on up and three motors on the down and you get uh, a very high payload carrying capacity and as soon as a drone lands it folds itself and this can be picked up by the lady so the gps coordinates of this uh, lady was set uh, as you can see in the one glimpse where uh, they use that gps coordinate to uh, send the drone and uh, the drone is carrying uh, some sort of uh, emergency uh, equipments which are being used uh, and the directions are uh, being provided by the doctors live uh, the camera is mounted on the drone so uh, you can see in about 1 minute 58 second uh, this uh, concept has been demonstrated to uh, show how drones can be quickly used to send quick help and uh, that's a very very good application and if these kind of things can be implemented a lot of uh, lives can be saved every year so uh, moving ahead to the next application this might already uh, you have been seen in a lot of different things so uh, uh, drone are uh, being uh, tested to use for uh, quick delivery and uh, this is an amazon uh, prime air they called and uh, they promise uh, it's a concept again so but the uh, but the concept promise to deliver your parcel in 30 minutes if it is un under a certain uh, weight limit which a drone can lift so this is a standard packaging the standard dimensions uh, which matches with the drone and as soon as you order this uh, amazon prime air drone it gets coupled with the package and uh, it will take a flight so again a concept but uh, trust me a lot of different companies around the world has uh, already been uh, testing uh, this uh, kinds of concept for uh, delivery packages and even in india someone uh, a few years back in mumbai tested uh, pizza delivery successfully with this drone uh, the drone laws were not there at that time but uh, uh, so that was not uh, something mainstream but uh, yes as the drone uh, laws uh, grows uh, mature uh, these things can be can become mainstream so you get the package in 30 minutes it gets delivered in front of your house and that's the concept uh, similarly uh, that was using a multi-rotor kind of uh, drone uh, and we will discuss what different kinds of drones are there multi-rotors and fixed wing and whatnot uh, one of them uh, for the same application google is uh, testing in i guess in australia it's called project wing and it's a VTOL uh, kind of drone. So VTOL stands for vertical takeoff and landing. So these kinds of drone have capability to take off vertically and then convert into a plane and then uh, do their uh, do their journey. And uh, you can see, so let me just rewind and you can see, so it's taking off vertically. And once it uh, gains some altitude, it converts into a plane uh, and uh, continue the journey. And when it uh, needs to land it again uh, can land vertically so that's a hybrid of a multi-rotor and fixed wing drone uh, which we will surely discuss uh, in today's class so again using gps and different sensors it can navigate and i think it will also show how it will deploy the payload so once it reaches the destination uh, it can launch uh, a parachute kind of thing i believe where uh, the the people can just take the parcel from there so yes that is uh, the project wing so recently uh, the coronavirus pandemic took the world uh, by surprise and everything uh, is being locked down everything uh, needs to be sanitized and this is a very tedious task especially if you need to some sanitize something uh, 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 something to get rid of the virus and it, it's in the high altitude maybe or some reason where humans cannot reach and maybe in an in, in an area where uh, it's very risky for people to go uh, such like these so uh, italy and china and france and countries like this even in india uh, drones like this are being used to spray uh, to spray the uh, the antiviral liquid the sanitizers you you say uh, to different uh, different uh, parts where it's not uh, safe for humans to go uh, similarly, these kinds of things are not uh, very recent in the past. Uh, in India, I've, I've seen a lot of different uh, people using drones for uh, spraying insecticides, for uh, irrigation of crops. And just now recently, uh, India was under the attack by a swarm of locusts, uh, this uh, uh, small insects uh, which eats up the crop and uh, drones are being used to, uh, to, to send them away. So... Uh, a lot of different applications of drones uh, where you need to uh, deploy some payloads or you need to spray something so that is there uh, 
uh now uh, one application which is very near and dear to my heart is uh, using drones in sports and this is becoming more and more mainstream these days so here is a short uh, video of third person view of how a night drone racing looks so you can see these the uh, drones are flying uh, very high speed with leds and are passing through the gates uh, at very high speed and a lot of different drones race together they make multiple laps and uh, these kinds of drone sports are becoming so mainstream that ESPN and different uh, DRL drone racing leagues are coming up in India we also have Indian drone racing league and around the world different uh, drone racing leagues are getting more and more popular uh, comparatively this is a new sport so just compare yourself if you want to become a formula one pilot what kind of training you need to go through and uh, how much money you need to invest on it and if you want to uh, get into uh, sports like this like drone racing all you need is, is some knowledge of flying drones and building drones and repairing it and since there is a, a, a very uh, less uh, learning curve compared to something like formula one racing uh, this is uh, getting more and more popular and people are exploring it as a as a career opportunity and a lot of people are already doing uh, that uh, so another thing which uh, I use drone for and a lot of people use drone for is uh, FPV freestyle video so uh, if you if you if you if you have some drones which are used for aerial cinematography platform uh, like DJI Phantom and DJI Inspire, then those are very stable and slow drones which has a gimbal and those are good for uh, for uh, capturing let's say uh, cinematic landscape or oceans or mountains. But uh, there is a gap in uh, in sports uh, photography in sports videography where you need a drone. Uh, to capture the uh, the bird's eye view of uh, a sports of uh, getting into the action but you cannot go very close to it because you don't have much agility and much speed that is the gap which is uh, being filled by the fpv drones because they can fly very fast and they can get very close to the action and very high speed these are very good for capturing something like drifting of cars on race tracks so see this is uh, being captured by a drone uh, by a very uh, famous uh, freestyle pilot uh, cinematic pilot uh, johnny fpv so uh, just uh, imagine uh, people are there in the stands and these cars are drifting and uh, just imagine getting the live feed from this drone into the big screen and how close you are to this action. So uh, that is another thing which are uh, being used. And as I already mentioned, you can still do landscape and you can do landscape in a whole new dimension. So look at this uh, beautiful video by Beautiful Destinations and how they are using FPV drones again by the same pilot to... Uh, do all kind of uh, different dimensional thing which is not possible with a usual drone which is not possible by usual cinematic cameras but an FPV drone because it's it can get very close to the action you're getting the live feed in your cam in your camera in your goggles you are flying by seeing it in real time uh, these are the kinds of shots which you can take and it totally blows away the mind and it uh, is totally uh, movie directors and producers and uh, cinematographers are exploring these kinds of uh, areas where they can use FPV drones. So, uh, yeah, I'll I'll try to uh, share the links of this video so you can check in full detail. So, coming back, so these are the different applications of drones, and these are not just the only applications of drone. I am sure there are uh, other thousands of applications where drones are being used. Uh, drone swams are being used these days. I am sorry I missed that video. So in a drone swam, uh, thousands of uh, drones, uh, they fly together and they do some kind of maneuvers there uh, where they can uh, form some shape in the night sky, where they can uh, do some light painting, they can uh, post messages. Uh, drones are being used for marketing by flying banners and whatnot. So. Uh, the applications are endless and if you have a flying camera with real-time feed you can do a lot of different things so I leave it up to you on what problem you are looking to solve uh, using the drones and now let's talk about buy versus DIY so uh, this topic is uh, uh, make people really curious because uh, some of you might already be thinking that uh, there are a lot of different drone choices available uh, in the market a lot of different companies uh, have their drones and uh, their software development kit open source uh, they are uh, they are uh, not very expensive they are easily accessible you can get them off the shelf so when there are so much of drones already available in the market why someone should make their own drone why someone should diy so i'll give you a small example here so i'll quickly shift to the overhead camera and this is the drone which i bought uh, from the market it's a dji mavic mini and this drone is almost like my racing drone it's very small it has a camera with gimbal inbuilt and it can do uh, 30 minutes of flight time so 
and these are the drone which I which I made here so this is the FPV racing drone and this is the drone which I made with the frame the motors I soldered everything together I programmed it and I fly it so uh, the question is why someone should uh, DIY so the answer is uh, very simple so uh, if your application is just uh, constrained to uh, taking aerial uh, photos taking aerial videos then yes you can uh, go and buy these kinds of drone they are having good camera they are having stabilized gimbal cameras which uh, make life much easier their software is very mature uh, but if you are someone like me who have a special application like fpv racing high speed drone flying freestyle uh, getting in from uh, small gaps or uh, I also made autonomous drones where I uh, program some GPS coordinates where my uh, drone go and deploy something uh, especially in uh, times of disaster some uh, drones have thermal cameras uh, to do some search operation some rescue operation in hills if you have these kinds of application then uh, you need special uh, drones with special sensors which can do something which you really want it to do which uh, drones available in the market are not uh, supposed to do so that is the only reason if you have any special application then you can consider DIYing. Uh, also one good reason to DIY your drone is that you get to learn a lot of different things. You get to learn the physics of flying object, you get to learn the program that involved, the hardware, uh, soldering if you have not done soldering before there is a lot of soldering involved in building a drone and uh, you learn a lot of different things uh, you learn about uh, the optics the camera the uh, uh, kinematics and uh, I'm going to just throw a lot of different words and these are available in the drone so uh, it's a very good learning platform and if you build your own drone then if you crash a drone because sooner or later trust me you are going to crash a drone <laughs> because uh, uh, when you mature as a pilot when you mature your piloting skills then you take more and more risk uh, you go closer to the object and often times you crash a drone so if you have made your own drone you have the ability to repair it you know what inside it and you can replace one part you can put another part uh, so basically if you DIY your own drone you will have an experiment platform uh, using which you can do a lot of different things and you know ins and outs of that thing and you can do whatever you want it. So that's uh, take from buy versus DIY. So this is a small uh, graphic which I created to uh, show the life cycle of uh, uh, a drone builder and a drone pilot so first of all you start by learning the physics of flying and uh, you, if you signed up for this class you're in the right place and we're going to do everything in order so you learn the physics of flying and then you build your own drone so you build it uh, from grounds up and uh, so I already mentioned that building a drone is like building an experimentation platform so you can always uh, add more and more things up to it and scale it to become more uh, more useful so let's say you can build a just uh, RC drone which uh, fly using a remote then you can add uh, uh, FPV camera and FPV goggles into it to get a real-time feed then you can add a GPS and a magnetometer and you can make it autonomous and uh, then you can add let's say a thermal camera or a night vision camera you can fly in the night so that is uh, the building part comes into picture and you tune your own build according to your application then you fly you know the soft uh, safety norms in your area and you uh, abide by the government legal rules and you fly uh, and uh, you can also practice and uh, practicing you can do on the simulator where you plug in your transmitter you can do real time uh, uh, practice or you just uh, fly with FPV goggles and camera and uh, become a better pilot with each flight and uh, race one is optional if you want uh, to race and uh, looking for more freestyle application but again just flying the drone and using that in the application that is the entire uh, kind of life cycle of a drone builder of a drone pilot so uh, let's start uh, with the, the definition of uh, the unmanned aerial vehicle because uh, when we talk about drone uh, drones are uh, uh, generally the uh, loser term so to speak and the more scientific term, the more uh, technical term, the more accepted term is the uh, UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicle and as the name suggests uh, a flying vehicle uh, which is not uh, uh, having any passenger which is not manned uh, which is not uh, flying by a, a let's say a pilot uh, sitting in the cockpit it's uh, called UAV unmanned aerial vehicle you control it uh, in from a ground station from a distance so by definition uh, UAV is a more scientific definition of drone uh, meaning a flying vehicle being operated by a remote control or is capable of flying autonomously using onboard computer uh, 
with optional feature to take input from ground station so a uav can take input such as the gps waypoint the uh, throttle the yaw the pitch and all kind of things and where to deploy payloads and uh, the uav is also capable of sending data back to the ground station like uh, what is its current speed uh, maybe the camera feed the current altitude the current location how much uh, battery is remaining how much flight time is uh, remaining what is the status of mission on which the uav is being sent uh, there is a constant debate in the drone community whether something which you are flying with the remote should be considered as a drone or only the autonomous uh, UAV should be considered as a drone. Uh, for me, anything which is unmanned, uh, which can fly and which can do these uh, two things uh, is considered as a drone. But again, uh, feel free to mold the des definition which uh, uh, suits your need. So uh, moving ahead, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles can be categorized into a lot of different uh, categories. But here in this slide, I'm going to be uh, broadly showing what are different categories. Uh, you can divide uh, UAVs. So uh, number one is a fixed wing category and what I mean by the fixed wing is they have a, a wing a wingspan with uh, uh, some uh, some shape, some size which uh, helps to make it stable in air. The other category is called multi-rotors uh, which I uh, show you over here. So multi-rotors is known as multi-rotor because these are having multiple rotors which can rotate. So multiple rotors which can rotate these it's it's called multi-rotors. So uh, it, uh, this is uh, a multi-rotor, a basic example, a quadcopter because it has four motors, so a quadcopter. Uh, in the UAVs, you will also find some helis, the remote control helis. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people who also like to build and pilot helis, so I've also included that in this category. Uh, this uh, These categories can be further divided into different categories like fixed wing, you get a pusher and a puller. So in a pusher uh, category fixed wing, the engine or the thrust producing uh, body is at the back and it is pushing the airplane forward. It is pushing the fixed wing forward. While in the puller, it's in the front and it's pulling it. So you can see on the left, uh, I have I have I've pasted a photo of a military drone. It's a very common military drone where uh, the motor is at the back and it has a wing. So both of them have wings, but uh, the uh, the positioning of the engine that defines if it's a pusher category or a puller category. Uh, similarly, in helis, there are two categories called fixed pitch and collective pitch. So uh, helicopters have uh, rotors on the top of it, which allows them to hover at a particular uh, place. And uh, if uh, the rotor changes its shape, it can uh, change the pitch. It's collective pitch. It's, it's not. It's a fixed pitch. But we will not be talking about helis a lot. So that's the only thing which uh, is here. Now, there is also... <clears throat> a specialized category which is the mixture of fixed wing and the multi-rotor and it's called hybrid category and uh, it's a very good example for VTOL or vertical takeoff and landing as I showed uh, in a video where Google project wing uh, take off uh, like a multi-rotor and it can hover at one place and then it can also be translated into a plane and it can uh, take uh, linear motion so uh, what is the basic difference which you can see uh, from this category is uh, multi-rotors uh, and helicopters and VTOL, they can hover at one place. So uh, they can stay and they can maintain their altitude, they can maintain their position at one place. Whereas the fixed wing will always be in a linear motion, it will always be flying forward. So that is the major difference between a fixed wing and a multi-rotor and we will uh, see in uh, uh, in the coming slides that how is these uh, different uh, kind of motions are possible and uh, how to design uh, these kinds of uh, 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 these kinds of thrust producing uh, bodies so let's talk about physics of flying object and this is where the fun part starts so now we are actually going to enter into the technical details we have talked about everything uh, non technical now talking about the technical details uh, everybody uh, has uh, uh, some sort of uh, forces acting upon it so if I take the example of this commercial airliner so the number one force which is acting on it is its own weight uh, because of gravity so gravity uh, exerts some sort of force it's called gravity force and that is the force which keeps us all on the ground and uh, in order to escape the gravity you need uh, to have some sort of thrust so some sort of lift should be there which is uh, enabling you to escape the gravity and flight. So in case of this uh, airliner, the thrust is uh, a parallel or sorry, thrust is uh, 
in in this direction compared to the gravity that is why a plane needs a runway it needs to uh, it needs to run on a runway and gain some enough uh, uh, kinetic energy and with the help of thrusters with the help of engines on its wing it is able to fly after some time so and these are some forces acting on it so if we talk about uh, the gravity gravity is nothing but uh, mass time the acceleration due to gravity the weight in newtons so if the mass of this plane it's let's say uh, 1000 tons and the gravity is let's say 9.8 then you can calculate the how much uh, acceleration how much uh, uh, how much newton of force is the uh, gravity is acting on it and it needs uh, more thrust to it's not enough thrust to escape that so uh, let's talk about what happens when this body is in air or uh, if we want to talk uh, in a more scientific terms uh, every 3d object uh, when it comes in contact of a fluid and fluid can be air it can be liquid it can be anything uh, which flows there are certain forces that also acts on it so uh, one of such force is lift and uh, this is uh, uh, the lift which is acting in the in the uh, perpendicular direction of this body and uh, lift is the force which uh, enables you to escape gravity which enables you to stay stable in this air so uh, to escape the gravity your lift should be more than your weight and uh, we will come and discuss to it more but uh, if the if a, if a 3d object is in a fluid in this case the air it is also having this components it's called the lift component and the other component is a drag component which is uh, Uh, completely in the opposite of direction to the thrust so we will talk about more uh, about lift and drag in a couple of slides later now let's talk about uh, the multi rotor so uh, in case of multi rotor because the rotors are mounted on the top and the propellers are facing upwards the lift is on the top direction and uh, let's see where the thrust is so this is the direction of the thrust and uh, notice why i chose a very uh, very uh, unique position of angle for thrust and uh, by this uh, arrow of thrust i am representing that uh, the thrust is not in uh, a straight up direction or straight uh, uh, right direction parallel direction compared to the uh, airplane that is because uh, there is a concept called thrust vectoring which we will be talking about in a bit so multi rotor what they do they change the rpm of their motor and according to the rpm of the motor they uh, do their motion so i'll give a very simple example so let's move to the overhead camera and uh let's let me show you what i mean by that so this is a multi rotor which is having four motors and if all the four motors are rotating at the same speed it will lift up it will escape gravity at one point and it will stay in this air now let's say my multi rotor wants to go in this direction so what it will do it will speed up these motors and it will speed down these motors so overall thrust coming from this motors these set of motors will be more and overall thrust coming from this set of motors will be less and the multi rotor will go in this direction similarly if i want to go in this direction uh, the rpm produced by these motors will uh, increase and the rpm produced by these motors will uh, decrease and it will generate more thrust and i will go in this direction so that is uh, how the thrust is uh, uh, change in case of multi rotor and that is why i have chose this very weird uh, angle for thrust and we will talk about more uh, about thrust vectoring in a later slide but uh, for now just uh, uh, consider that uh, the thrust coming from multi rotor is not a uh, straight up which is a misconception but it keeps on changing depending on uh, the motion of this multi rotor okay now let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, lift and the drag in more detail so as i already mentioned that the lift is the perpendicular component of the force acting on a flying body when it passes a fluid in this case the body is uh, the jet liner and uh, the fluid is the air and the drag is the parallel component uh, which is acting on this flying body and uh, lift is a desirable component more the lift uh, uh, easy it would be for the body to lift up and escape gravity but the drag is the non desirable component and it uh, hinders the motion it hinders the forward motion for the body so if the body is moving in this direction the drag will push it back so this is nothing but uh, uh, the third uh, newton law if so uh, every force has equal and opposite reaction so more the body wants to move forward the uh, the drag would come into the picture and uh, hindering that uh, particular uh, rectilinear motion in the case of drone again the drag is the parallel component the lift is uh, the uh, perpendicular component and uh, 
the objective is same for every flying object uh, we need to maximize the lift uh, the more the lift the better it is for, for the flying body to keep in air the better uh, stability it will get and minimize the drag uh, the minimum the drag uh, acting on a body the more uh, desirable effect it has it would be more stable and the more the drag the more unstable the body will be in the fluid and again the fluid here is air so i am going to be talking about a very powerful concept about uh, about uh, the lift and that is the thrust is to weight ratio so uh, every body which needs to escape the gravity should have a thrust is to weight ratio more than one so what i mean by that so let's say a weight of the body is one kg so it should produce more than one kg or more than one newton of thrust to be able to escape the gravity and if you talk about uh, these drones uh, which i have which i have made so these uh, drones have a weight around one kg and uh, each motor at full rpm is capable of producing let's say 2 kgs of thrust so uh, 2 into 8 is uh, 8 kgs of thrust uh, 2 into 4 is 8 kgs of thrust so 1 kg is the weight of this drone and 8 kilogram of thrust it can produce so the thrust is to weight ratio of this particular drone is 8 is to 1 which is very high uh, and generally speaking a 2 is to 1 is the uh, minimum uh, ratio which is uh, expected by a body to keep uh, in the air uh, stably so uh, uh, i can i can add more powerful motors and uh, the overall uh, thrust which i can generate with them can be let's say uh, 10 kilogram and the weight of this drone is fixed 1 kilogram so i will be having a 10 is to 1 uh, thrust is to weight ratio so uh, more the thrust is to weight ratio better the body uh, will be stable more lift it will produce and uh, thrust uh, uh, producing engines or electric uh, these all depends on uh, different things which we'll be talking about uh, in the motor uh, chapter uh, the second thing which uh, you can do is uh, uh, reduce the drag as i mentioned in the objective is minimize the drag and uh, to minimize the drag we first need to learn on what different factors the drag depends on so drag depends on two uh, factors number one is the shape of this object and number two the uh, viscous force between the fluid and the body so we all know about viscosity that is the force of uh, viscous force in the fluid so technically speaking we cannot control the viscous force between the fluid and the body because that is out of our control uh, we may be able to control it uh, by changing the material uh, used in this body but again what are different choices we have when we are making an airplane we are using uh, aero grade uh, aluminum and some alloys because that is the only option that are lightweight that is uh, dense and that is suitable for making planes so uh, technically speaking we cannot uh, change the friction between the fluid and the body so what is the other thing that is remaining uh, which we can use to minimize the drag that is the shape of this object and uh, trust me when I say we use shape of this object by minimize to minimize the drag and it is happening everywhere everywhere you see it's so intuitive it is so uh, programmed into the brains of human being that they are using uh, it everywhere in every invention they do in everything they do in fact uh, we do this uh, so intuitively that we also do not realize so I'll show you some with some examples so if you if you uh, look closely to the wing of any airplane you will see this kind of shape and this kind of shape is known as airfoil so the the idea behind having uh, the sh wing shaped in such a way is to reduce the drag so you can see this is some sort of teardrop kind of shape and this is very efficient uh, shape when it comes to uh, reduce drag and uh, these kinds of thick reduce drag and uh, give some lift to the subject making it more stable in this air and uh, depending on the application we use different kind of airfoil we have ks airfoil we have uh, all kind of airfoil available depending on the application and what kind of plane we have uh, we use airfoil so this is a very good uh, diagram so you can see we have a disc we have a spare and we have a teardrop and you can see uh, how the uh, the fluid is uh, uh, is uh, going across the body and uh, you can see the small droplets everywhere so this is the least here the teardrop uh, uh, structure and that is why the teardrop structure is uh, one of the structure which has the least uh, drag so when all these three bodies are passing through the liquid you can see passing through the fluid you can see that teardrop is having the least drag and uh, <clears throat> again these kinds of thing is very common to see in the nature and uh, this is a, a diagram by uh, NASA and you can see the winglets. Uh, winglets are something at the edge of uh, the 
the the airplane wing and you can see it's uh, tilted upwards and it created uh, some sort of air vortex and uh, winglet reduces the induced drag component so again a lot of different places where you can see uh, the application of changing shape to reduce drag uh, one such is uh, the uh, the body of a sports car so you can see they are shaped in such a way that uh, it cuts the fluid in such a way that the drag is reduced and uh, i also told you that it is very intuitively programmed in our uh, in our mind so you can see when we swim and if uh, uh, we try to we tend to keep our feet uh, parallel to the to the uh, to the water surface and that is why we uh, we do that because we want uh, less drag acting on it compared to the the second picture and this is a very good example of uh, the fastest uh, uh, animal on this earth it's a uh, falcon uh, the alpha uh, predator and uh, when a falcon dive i believe it can dive at a speed of 200 kilometers per hour and this is the diving shape of a falcon it uh, it uh, it creates this shape using its wings and this body and it helps to dive very fast because uh, the drag is reduced so you can see that uh, it's uh, so intuitive and it's uh, in nature it's in engineering it's everywhere in our mind that uh, uh, because we are constantly in contact of fluid in contact of air that is why uh, we need to keep in mind what uh, shape helps reduce this drag so uh, let's talk about degree of freedom okay so let's continue with the physics of flying object and now let's talk about degree of freedom so every flying object when it's in air it has a certain degree of freedom uh, and by degree of freedom i mean the axis uh, on which it moves so uh, generally speaking in a 3d uh, space you have a roll pitch and your axis uh, the roll is on x axis the pitch is on y axis and the yaw is on z axis so uh, if you take an example of uh, this drone so uh, this is the roll axis its roll degree of freedom this is the pitch axis its pitch degree of freedom and this is the yaw axis its yaw degree of freedom other than this if you want to control the height you need to control the thrust and uh, the thrust produced from the motors and uh, similarly in case uh, of an airplane uh, you have the roll axis the pitch axis and uh, the uh, yaw axis uh, if uh, you want to control the altitude you uh, want to control the speed then you need to control the thrusters you need to control the engines uh, producing uh, the energy so now the question is how uh, these bodies these flying bodies such as the drones or airplanes they uh, control uh, this degree of freedom so if you talk about uh, uh, controlling the yaw pigeon roll axis it uh, is done in a certain ways depending on the body so if a body is aerodynamically stable it can use a control surface it is if, if a body is aerodynamically unstable and i'll come to that what is aerodynamically unstable uh, it can use something called thrust vectoring or uh, using an onboard computers and sensors so let's first talk about aerodynamically stable so consider a, a passenger jetliner airplane such as boeing 747 or airbus a320 uh, the uh, application of such airplane is to carry passenger and uh, to be more efficient on fuel uh, to uh, to be more uh, stable uh, because uh, passengers wants to enjoy a stable flight they wants to enjoy a peaceful flight with uh, which uh, with less turbulent or uh, have a peace uh, in the cabin so that is an example of aerodynamically uh, stable uh, 3d body uh, now let's uh, uh, let's see if that is also true for something uh, like a fighter jet so do you want a fighter jet uh, pilot to have a, a good experience to have a, a smooth soothing flight if that is the case then they would be shot down by an enemy aircraft so that is why uh, in case of fighter jet you need very fast maneuvering you need to have uh, something uh, a capability where you can uh, quickly uh, escape a missile attack or uh, enemy uh, machine guns or whatever so uh, therefore you don't need a good stability you need to be unstable so you can do some quick maneuver so that is why uh, a jet by design a fighter jet by design uh, is aerodynamically unstable and uh, because of aerodynamically unstable it uh, use that for its advantage to make quick maneuvers uh, on the other hand a jetliner like airbus a320 or a380 they are aerodynamically stable uh, their uh, wing structure their uh, uh, dihedral which is uh, the angle on which wings are bent their airfoil all is designed to keep uh, stability in mind and uh, that is why they are able to uh, do a very uh, smooth uh, uh, 
uh, landing a very smooth flight and even if the engines are failed they can uh, soar at uh, to some distances so to some kilometers they can uh, hover not hover they can uh, keep st stable and they can fly for some uh, distance without uh, engine uh, whereas in case in case of drones or in case of jet they are aerodynamically unstable uh, there is no airfoil here there is uh, nothing which is uh, keeping this body uh, stable in this air uh, everything is done with the help of onboard computer and we'll talk about that similarly in case of jets uh, they move uh, using thrust vectoring so now let's talk about how they move so in case of uh, the uh, commercial airliners they have something called control surfaces so uh, they have ailerons they have rudders they have elevators so consider it uh, this is a uh, uh, an airplane in my hand and I am going in the straight direction and if I want to uh, ascend the altitude I will use my elevator so elevator will go up now what will happen the air was moving in in this direction now air will hit this on my tail the elevator and air will push it down and if this push it down I will go up ascending so that is how the control surfaces work similarly consider this the rudder so now it is straight I am going straight now I want to go right I will move the rudder right so air will push it in this direction and now I will uh, do a right turn so rudder is used to control the yaw uh, the ailerons they worked in pair if a right aileron goes up left aileron goes down the wind pushes the right one from the top uh, from the up the wind pushes the left one from the down and it will do a roll right similarly for roll left uh, the opposite so rudder is used to control the yaw degree of freedom ailerons are used to control the roll degree of freedom elevator is used to control the uh, pitch degree of freedom similarly in case of jet jet also has all three these uh, ailerons rudders and elevators and more apart from that a jet also has uh, something called thrust vectoring so what it can do as you can see on the right hand side there is a jet engine and jet engine can change the direction up and down and the overall uh, axis on which the thrust is generating it changes and uh, uh, this is called thrust vectoring where you change the uh, axis on which the thrust is acting so in a jet it is uh, done uh, by thrust vectoring of engine in case of drone uh, it is done by an onboard computer where then onboard computer what it will do it will command uh, some some motors to spin at a different rpm and some motor to spin at different rpm so if we want to do let's say pitch down what the computer will do computer will spin the back motor at higher rpm and the front motor at lower rpm and the overall rpm will be more from the back and it will pitch down similarly if i want to do roll right the left two motors will spin up the right two motors will speed down and it will do roll right and how much rpm to uh, give to each motor is calculated by a flight controller and that is where uh, the computers comes into the picture so uh, you can see uh, this is a quadcopter. Uh, we have uh, uh, two green motor uh, rotating clockwise, two blue motors diagonally rotating anti-clockwise. So they cancel each other thrust, and the overall thrust is in the up up uh, axis. So it will move. Uh, it will hover up. But if you want to do any roll, yaw, uh, or pitch, then you need to speed some motors up and some motors down, and that's how you do roll, flip, rotation, and up and down. So. Uh, uh, UAV multi rotors are aerodynamically unstable. They don't have any airfoil. They don't have anything uh, which is helping to generate lift uh, to increase lift. Uh, so they require a computer connected to the sensors and they use mathematical algorithms to, to have a stable flight to hover at one place or to do roll right or roll left or your pitch or anything. Uh, so that is why sensors comes into the picture and uh, accelerometers and gyroscope and uh, how much RPM each motor should be spinning at a particular time and that is what we will be learning in this course uh, in future chapters uh, how the mathematics algorithm the digital signal processing and uh, the control systems work together to to make this uh, UAV multi rotors fly and that is why without sensors without an onboard computer you cannot fly a drone uh, and if there are some people who are thinking they can control the drone uh, with their remote uh, without uh, any computer or sensor uh, please don't try that home uh, because that's not what uh, is supposed to uh, fly a multi-rotor so one thing uh, i want you to do is from now on whenever i say drone i want you to picture this uh, this quadcopter with four motors 
uh, two of them uh, rotating clockwise two of them rotating anti clockwise because if we keep saying uavs and drones and you keep imagining uh, the uh, airplanes and helicopters and what not it will become very difficult for us to be on the same page so uh from now on whenever i say drone i want you to picture this quadcopter and we will be good to go so moving to the next uh, uh, next part of uh, this class is we need to discuss different components of the drone and every component is important every component has their own chapter so in this uh, small section i'm just going to show you all the components so you have a small picture in your mind that what all things goes inside uh, making a drone so first and foremost is the very uh, 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 uh important uh, components of frame of this drone which uh, house the entire assembly then we have the motors and uh, if you can see here so these are the motors here uh, in the quadcopter which i told you to imagine we have four motors because quad means four and uh, this is inside of this motor but we will talk more about it in the motor section in the motor chapter uh, then we have the propeller here as you can see these are the propellers these are the propellers comes in different shapes and sizes and today is the day of propeller which we'll be discussing a lot uh, then we have electronic speed controller uh, here my electronic speed controllers are behind this uh, electrical tape so you cannot see but i'll make sure to show you in the esc chapter uh, then we have something called power distribution board because we have four motors and we only have one battery so to distribute the power and to because there are some other components which require a different voltage than these motors so to distribute the power to get correct voltage we have a power distribution board uh, right at the center uh, which we will also be discussing in future chapters then we have the brain of uh, the drone that is uh, the flight controller right here uh, this brain uh, carries some sensors and some cpu and do all kind of computation uh, then we have a battery so i have no battery there but here is a battery so this is <coughs> excuse me a lithium polymer battery and uh, a very risky thing if not uh, used correctly so we will be talking about that and its hazards in the battery chapter and how to charge it and not uh, then we have the transmitters and receiver so receiver goes inside the drone transmitter stays inside uh, transmitter stays with the pilot uh, and uh, on the pilot hand so that's how you control the drone you give command to the drone uh, in case of autonomous drones where you don't pilot the drone yourself uh, you need a computer and uh, you also need a receiver to send uh, data to the drone such as gps or uh, altitude data whatever uh, then we have fpv transmission system where we have uh, a small fpv camera if you can see uh, right here this is a small fpv camera which sends the live feed to something uh, like this it's a video transmitter if you can see so this video transmitter sends uh, take signal from this camera and send to a ground station receiver and this is the antenna that is being used for transmission it's uh, it's called circular polarized antenna and a good piece of technology right here we'll talk about that in fpv chapters uh, then there are some miscellaneous uh, some optional stuff as you can see so you have a telemetry radio to check your drone current speed current consumption uh, current battery voltage you have a gps receiver to uh, know the drone current uh, latitude and longitude then you have uh, excuse me uh, a gopro or hd camera with a gimbal if you want some nice uh, recording you have a goggles or a screen where you can see the live uh, video feed coming from the drone and what's this this is something very interesting so uh, this is a race transponder and it's used in fpv drone racing so what we do we mount a small uh, uh, small uh, transponders on our drone and uh, when the drone uh, fly at a very high speed from a gate from the entry the first gate there is a receiver there the ir receiver which locks the flight uh, sorry which locks the lap time of the drone and this is the transponder which is being used for that purpose now the star of uh, today's class is the propeller and uh, this is what we are going to discuss in great details today so propeller is uh, the cheapest part of the drone while the other things cost uh, hundreds of dollars you can buy a set of propeller for as low as uh, three dollars so this is the cheapest part but again in my opinion the most important part and this is the first component in my opinion which you should choose because uh, this is a component which will be the deciding factor for your frame and why is that to explain that uh, let's go to the overhead camera so 
the application of my drone is to lift something is to carry something so in my case i want my drone to carry a fpv camera and i want my drone to let's say carry an hd camera in your case it could be you want your drone to carry uh, let's say a pesticide spray or a sanitizer spray so you need to calculate how much weight your drone should be having at the uh, before flight so it's called all up weight or auv so if i if i have an all up weight for 1 kg uh, with the mathematics of uh, the thrust to weight ratio i need at least 2 kg of thrust to make this drone stable in the flight and how, where is the thrust coming from thrust is coming from the combinations of uh, motors and propellers so let's say uh, i have decided my application i have decided that my drone uh, would need to carry this camera and the overall weight including everything batteries and that uh, camera would be 1 kg so i need at least 2 kg of thrust uh, for this drone and i also know that i want my drone to be this small and not very big so what is uh, the deciding factor now so i need at least 2 kg of thrust so i need a motor which can generate at least uh, uh, 1 by 4th of 2 kg or let's say half kg of thrust so i want one of my motor to generate half kg of thrust and i have this limitation this is my limitation the uh, this size so i cannot fit this propeller here because this propeller might be able to generate half kg of thrust but there is not much clearance here if my propeller rotates it will uh, obstruct by the frame so that is the limitation i'm playing with here i cannot uh, put a 10 inch propeller here so all i can do is put at least uh, minimum uh, of 5 uh, uh, inch propeller here and not more than that so that is where the propellers comes into the picture and that is why it's uh, one of the most important component because propeller tells you uh, to uh, what kind of uh, thrust you are looking for and what is uh, the size uh, which you can go for the propeller so while choosing a propeller there are a lot of different things that comes into the picture and the first uh, deciding factor is material and the power delivery source so uh, speaking uh, generally there are two uh, uh, common material for propellers one is the wood propeller and uh, they are used for gas based uh, uavs or engine based uavs where you use some gasoline or some gas uh, some some sort of fuel Uh, to power your uavs the plastic propellers are used for electric uavs where you are using some electric motors to generate thrust uh, because the wood has more density the wood is uh, 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 the wood is uh, more uh, let's say solid that is why it is more suitable for electric based uh, sorry that is why it's more suitable for gas based because uh, when a gas engine generate thrust that is uh, not easy for plastic uh, polymers to control it that is why wood propellers are used there in case of electric plastic is a good choice and uh, if i say plastic i mean uh, the different polymers of plastic so it can be uh, <coughs> sorry it can be glass nylon it can be polycarbonate uh, so polycarbonate uh, uh, propellers are very common in drones such as these uh the second uh, thing which uh, uh, you have to look for propeller is the direction of rotation so if you remember i showed the photo of a quadcopter and i told you that two of the motors spin clockwise and two of the motors spin anti clockwise but the uh, overall thrust uh, is upwards that is why the uh, uh, the propeller and the motor generate thrust downwards and as a result the uh, uh, the drone goes up by newton third laws of motion that is why the thrust is uh generated at the downside even with the rocket the thrust is generated downside and the body moves up uh, by the third law of motion so uh if uh, two motors are uh, spinning clockwise and two motors are spinning anti clockwise but to keep the direction of thrust in one direction uh, the shape of the propellers needs to be different so that is why uh, there are clockwise propellers and there are anti clockwise propellers if you look at the overhead cam so uh, you can see there are two different shape of this propeller two different uh, Uh, angle of the blade so this is a clockwise propeller uh, it uh, spins clockwise uh, this way and this is an anti clockwise propeller this spin anti clockwise so the motor and the propeller spins this way and the overall thrust on the downwards and it uh, helps pushes the drone up so uh, this is uh, another category of propellers the direction so in a in a quadcopter in a, in a drone uh, again when i say drone please uh, think about quadcopter you need uh, two clockwise propellers so here i have two clockwise propellers and you have two anti clockwise propellers so you cannot just keep one propeller in every drone so keep that in mind 
the other thing here is the number of blades so as you can see in this drone i have a three bladed propeller in this drone which i bought off the shelf we have two bladed propeller so why is that why we have different number of blades and on the screen you can see something with the uh, six blades so uh, this is because of the different in application so here is a simple rule so more the number of blades more easy it is for you to control the uh, drone more easy it is uh, uh, more control you have on your drone if you are flying with the remote but because more blades means more surface area it will consume more current so that is a simple uh, mathematics here so uh, generally speaking for fpv drone racing a three bladed propeller seems like an appropriate choice a three blade propeller uh, give you enough handling give you enough control that you can maneuver your drone at uh, sharp turns at very high speed uh, and also it not consume lot of current uh, as compared to six blade propeller but uh, two blade propellers consume less current it will give you more flight time but it will not give you much control so you need to find a sweet spot and talking about the sweet spot i'm going to tell you one thing which uh, stands true for everything in drone and that is trade off so in drone everything is trade off you gain one thing you will lose a couple of more things so you need to find a sweet spot in case of propeller number of blade equal to 3 is a sweet spot which uh, which don't consume much current like six blade propeller but which will give you more control compared to two blade propeller so a three blade propeller for fpv drone racing uh, and fpv freestyle is a very sweet spot uh, which people have found now let's talk about propeller sizes so talking about the propeller propeller comes in all shapes and sizes so this is uh, a 5 inch propeller here uh, this is a 10 inch propeller here as you can see so uh, apart from that you also see that they have certain degree of angle on each side so there are certain angle of attack let's say here and certain angle here so what are these so it's called pitch so a propeller has uh, two different uh, uh, numbers associated with it it's a uh, length and it's called a pitch a length of propeller is straightforward it's the length in inches so a 10 inch propeller is 10 inches long a 5 inch propeller is 5 inches long and it is important because uh, if your frame is small uh, it can only accommodate let's say 5 inch propeller you cannot use 10 inch propeller so that is quite straightforward more the length more thrust it will produce because there will be more surface area more air will be cut and more the length more thrust will be produced, more current will be consumed. Simple and straightforward calculation. Talking about the pitch, pitch is something as you can see in the right diagram is uh, how much distance uh, the body travel in one rotation. So if your propeller has uh, a pitch of 8, it will travel 8 inches in one rotation. If it having 4, it will travel 4 uh, inches in one re full revolution. So that is a simple maths and uh, we do not care about how much uh, it travels in one revolution but we uh, do care about uh, how the pitch affects the thrust. So more the pitch, more thrust you will get, more current it will consume. So when you are buying a propeller and if I go to the overhead cam, so here you will see that a propeller has uh, some markings on it i'm not sure if you are able to see but it says 10 into 4 cross 5 so uh, a 10 into 4 cross 5 means the propeller is 10 inches long and having a pitch of 4.5 inches so in propeller everything is in inches uh, similarly uh, some propellers have different markings so this is having a marking of 5045 so there are two different kinds of marking which is accepted when uh, buying a propeller it's either uh, it's let's say uh, in the pp in the presentation you can see one is 5 into 4 cross 5 or the other is uh, 5045 so both are acceptable both means 5 inches length and 4.5 inches of pitch so generally speaking as a rule of thumb for uh, fpv mini quads fpv drone racing uh, 5 uh, 4 to 6 inches propeller is something you are looking for and pitch should be around uh, 3 to 5 inches. So uh, moving to the last section of propeller selection fundamentals, there are also different things that affect uh, the overall uh, propeller selection and these are shape, uh, weight and surface area. So of course more the surface area more air will it cut more thrust it will generate but again more amperes will it consume and less flight time will you get uh, something which uh, some propeller manufacturer did a couple of years back is take a six inch propeller and cut one inches from it so what you will get is effectively more surface area 
uh, but uh, uh, with the same length. So it's called bull nose propellers, as you can see in the second uh, photo on the screen. Uh, these are not very efficient propeller, but it will give you more thrust, which were suitable for racing. I don't think anyone uses it anymore. So there are bull nose, there are hybrid bull nose. Uh, now let's talk about the weight of this propeller so of course the lighter the propeller is the easier it will be for your motors to spin it uh, but again uh, the uh, heavier the propeller is it uh, is more difficult for motor to spin and the overall effective rpm of this motor reduces but that is the case and uh, lighter the propeller the more uh, uh, agility it will give you so that is a sweet spot again you need to find but uh, one thing that uh, you can be really sure of is as long as your motor and propeller combination is not drawing abnormal amount of current you are okay to use any length of propeller any shape of propeller and any number of blades or any material whether your propeller is made of wood or plastic or carbon fiber or it has three blades or six blades or whatever it is having uh, seven inch of length or 4.5 of a pinch as long as it is not consuming abnormal amount of current, it's okay. But once it consumes more than a limit of current, it can burn the motor wire, it can demagnetize the magnets, and it can permanently damage the ESC. So always uh, make sure that it doesn't consume abnormal current and it uh, uh, stays in the rating limits of uh, motor and ESC current. So if your ESC is 30 ampere, make sure to not go beyond 25 amperes or it will burn the ESC. Okay, so that was all for today's class and uh, uh, I hope uh, you would be having uh, some questions, some doubts and uh, I would be able to uh, take that in the office hours uh, to come. So if you are watching this class uh, on the very first day, then tomorrow we'll be having the office hours and you will be communicated by the email to join. Uh, so that was the first chapter where we talk about uh, propellers, uh, especially uh, the tension, the star and but also about the physics uh, which goes inside the drone and all uh, these things. So uh, thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.